And now, Stewbag Fool presents. Five things that TV shows need to stop doing. Number one, overlong contestant introductions. Hello and welcome to A Game Show. Our first contestant tonight is Paul Simmons from Stockbridge. He's a graphic designer by trade and he collects model trains in his spare time. And that's it. That's all you need to know. I have no fucking clue who decided that contestant introductions on game shows should take about 80 billion hours and include every single copious tiny little detail of the contestants' lives and what winning would mean to them. But it needs to stop. But Stuart, our focus groups say that viewers need to be able to relate to contestants sort of as though they're characters in a story. No, they don't. Stop telling people what they want instead of actually thinking about what's appropriate for the format. And if this is a story, it's a really poorly told one. Shouldn't we learn stuff about a contestant by the way they play the game and the stuff they say during it? If this is essentially you trying to make a contest show into a story, 20 minutes of exposition followed by a plot isn't exactly good technique, is it? See, I'm even bored looking at this muted footage play out. There is no reason for it to take up half as long as it usually does on game shows these days. Number two, self-congratulatory intro sequences that go on for fucking ages. I recently watched an episode of The Apprentice USA, expecting my least favourite thing about it to be just the fact it's hosted by that guy, but I found that as someone from a nation whose approach to broadcasting was founded via a completely different avenue to US broadcasting, to my English eyes, it's completely fucking unwatchable. It takes at least 20 minutes to get to any actual content. All we're doing is just these flashy flyover shots of skyscrapers that communicate nothing except, this is what a city looks like. Wow, buildings look totally different from the sky. And these shots, which are typically meant to be trans... transitions, would be fine for like a couple of seconds to bridge the gap between Trump's opening speech, which in itself basically just amounts to, this time on The Apprentice, we're basically gonna do exactly what we do every year on the show. Yes, there was a point in me saying that. Shut up. And these sequences are intercut with stuff that's coming up and clips from older episodes that tell us fuck all and just waste everyone's time. Anyway, speaking of American reality shows, number three, previously and coming up segments between advert breaks. Now, I understand putting a previously montage at the beginning of a show showing what happened last week is a little refresher and a coming up at the end teasing what's gonna happen next week, but when you start having both of those between advert breaks, it doesn't just become overkill, it communicates just how stupid the producers of the show think the audience is. We've got a previously before the advert break and a coming up after the advert break. These twats have so little faith in their viewers' abilities to remember things that they have to remind them of what they saw about 10 minutes before the commercials, and so little faith in their attention span that they have to tease them about what's going to happen on the show in about 10 minutes' time after the next one. Coming up on Stubag Fool's voiceover TV rant thing, I'm going to complain about contestant interviews. Stay tuned. Previously, I complained about pointless self-congratulatory intro sequences. Do you remember that? If not, are you a fucking goldfish or something? Number four, talking about people behind their backs. Now, maybe this is just a difference in worldview thing, and yeah, we all bitch about people to some extent, and maybe a bit of interviews of contestants going, well, I think that Mildred isn't really doing that well at the task. She was all, I want to do it this way, and the way she wanted to do it was wrong, in my opinion. Maybe a bit of that's fine, but when you cherry pick these moments so pretty much any and all one-on-one -on -one chats with contestants is just them bitching about each other behind their backs, it starts to make my skin crawl and it just feels really odious and slimy, and it makes me start questioning whether there's any point in civilization if this is how fucking petty people can be behind closed doors. I know people are nosy fuckers and we often can't help ourselves, but contest shows where people are nice about each other do work, 
I recently did a positive video about the Great British Bake Off, and the environment on that show proves it can work. If a contestant's struggling, other contestants help them out. If someone's stressed out, someone will give them a hug and say, it's alright. If someone feels bad about not doing well, the judges will say, don't worry, it's alright, because it is alright. Because at the end of the day, these are just people, and being nice to other people is good, and seeing people be nice about each other is awesome, and it makes me feel genuinely happy about the world we live in. Well, I think that Michelle is fucking up the task because she is a horrible person, and I hate her. <gasps> Did you see what Celine said about Michelle? Hashtag CBB Dramagate 2016. Omfuga. God, TV is fucking depressing. And finally, there are probably more, but this is all the acknowledgement I think the pricks that make these types of shows deserve. Number five, three words, reality TV stars. Nuff said.